In the dead of night, the walls of the palace rumbled, waking all within. The night outside lit up like daylight. We ran to the windows to see the agate district all the way on the other side of the city alight, belching smoke into the sky. Everyone ran to assist. When I arrived outside the walls of that quarter, I saw even the prince assisting with the relief efforts. The very richest inhabited this sector of the Agate District. It was also the home of theaters, galleries, and parks. And every bit burned in flames of orange and green. Get up on that wall, Godric called. We need to contain this. I didn't know who he'd been addressing, but followed the order. Other lamplighters clambered up to the top of the wall with me. At the top, a fiery lake met our eyes. I had never wished to be able to transform into my other form before that night. We couldn't see more than a few feet ahead. Through the shouts around me, I understood someone was in the middle of the conflagration, maintaining it. The heat was relentless. No one could get close without weapon or craft catching and burning to cinders. Responders called for water to beat back the flames, but it wasn't enough. Magical fire didn't follow the same rules as natural flames. I climbed back down from the wall and tried to draw close, thinking I could withstand the blaze and stop the magus within. Despite all I had endured, my own feet refused to carry me in. A familiar voice yelled from behind me over the din. I can shield you! I turned and found Holly standing there. What? I shouted back, not entirely sure I had heard her right. With ice. I can shield you so you might make it through. It's too much, I objected. I'm strong. I hesitated. Doubt in Holly's abilities wasn't my true objection. On the contrary, I felt perfectly confident about her powers. No, no, no. My heart beat. I don't know what showed in my expression just then, but Holly added, The entire city will burn if we don't do something. She was right, and I believed she'd already weighed the risks. It was an easy calculation, but I didn't like it. I looked back to the fire and drew in a steady breath, nodding. Do it. Holly held out her hands and surrounded me in a bubble of magical ice. Even through it, I could feel the heat of the flames. I ran in, forcing myself to keep my eyes open, and telling myself Holly would protect me. The roar was immense, a physical force pressing in all around me. My head pivoted back and forth, seeking the magus. From what I had heard, he or she should be near where we landed our craft. I wondered briefly how our arrival related to this attack, for surely it was connected. I recognized the little alcove where I had transformed. Close. I should be close. I had no idea how hard the ice bubble taxed Holly. What would happen to me if her strength gave out? Could my body stand incineration? I didn't fancy finding out, not while Nicodemus still lived. I clamped down on suspicions of betrayal, the darkest parts of my memory whispered. I did not have time for those. Not now. I spotted a shadow darker than the flames. A figure that didn't move and dance like everything else. Arms stretched out to its sides. It formed a perfect target. For what? Bloody blazes, I had forgotten to grab a weapon. With no other options, I hurtled towards the figure and drove my fist into its head. The figure stumbled back, and the bulk of the flames dissipated. Countless buildings and their trappings still burned around us, however. The Magus, a young woman, panting, doubled over. Her eyes cut to me, and a hateful scowl seared across her soot-smeared face. Wretch! She snarled, lifting her hands back up. I attacked again, Holly's bubble still surrounding me. Shards of ice sliced at the Magus's skin as I came within range. We fought. She had been trained but not as well as I. In the back of my mind, I thanked Flynn for his merciless lessons.